So I'm Brian Smith, and I'm pretty sure that all of you are going to fall into one of three categories. A, you either know a teacher, B, you are a teacher, or C, you probably had a teacher at some point in your life. Um, and so we're going to talk about how to build a better teacher, because it's affected all of us at some point. Um, I've always wanted to be a teacher or a truck driver, and that, that literally is one of my earliest memories. Um, people would say, what do you want to be when you grow up? And I'd say, a truck driver or a teacher. Um, my Uncle Jim was a truck driver, and he would always get out his wallet and give me a dollar. And there was so much money in his wallet that I kind of equated truck driving to being wealthy. Um, and that's the whole reason I wanted to drive a truck. There was nothing more to it. Um, it was just to be rich. Um, I wanted to be a teacher because my kindergarten teacher, Miss Joyce, was um, phenomenal. I felt safe in her room. She gave me a hug every morning. Um, she knew who I was. Uh, it was just a great kindergarten experience. And I thought, I want to do that. So that's where it started. Um, after high school, I had too much undiagnosed ADD to go straight into a four-year college. So I went to work in some factories and then I decided <laughs> I've learned a whole lot. And what I've learned is I don't want to do this for my whole life. <laughs> um, so at that point I had too many bills. So I worked full-time job and two part-time jobs and went to Lenore Ryan um, at night and got my degree in psychology and human and community services, which qualified me to neither be a teacher or not even a truck driver at that point. Um, so I don't know exactly what I had been thinking. So I went back to UNC Greensboro at, on the weekends this time and got my teaching license. So um, I had finally earned the title of teacher and I was the first one in my family to graduate college. Um, actually even like to start college. Um, and so, but I was a teacher and like that's what I had worked so hard for and I had thought about it since I was a kid in horizontal striped t-shirts before we realized that was not an attractive look on me. And <laughs> so I was a teacher and I set up a classroom and I was like, yeah, I'm a teacher. Yep. Um, so my first, my teaching license was actually in special education, which is helping kids who have learning differences. So my first day of teaching um, in walks Jalen. So that's Jalen. And within a matter of minutes, I realized I was nowhere close to being a teacher. Um, Jalen was a great kid. He was energetic. He was passionate. He was enthusiastic. And he would sometimes get into trouble when his enthusiasm was focused on the wrong things. Um, Jalen and I instantly bonded. And then I realized Jalen can't read, and I don't know how to teach him to read. So kind of failing at this whole being a teacher thing from the, from the get-go. And so his second grade year, which is when I met him, it, I really struggled. And I thought, if I'm going to be a second-year teacher, I've got to learn how to teach Jalen to read. So I gave up two weeks of my summer, and I went and I learned all the minutia of reading. Um, and it really became a passion. Um, so Jalen built a better teacher. Um, so I went back the next year, and I thought, I'm teaching Jalen to read. And I got a new kid, Randall. And Randall came in, and he through his actions, said, you don't need to teach me anything. I'm a really smart kid. I'm really bright, um, but I've got some sensory issues, and I don't know how to deal with my physical space in the world. So there you go. Let me fail a second time. Um, so I found the people who know about sensory issues, and we worked really hard. And one of the things that we did for Randall was he, we did heavy work. And so every day, Randall, who would just we had that relationship. I had connected with Randall and we bonded and he just trusted me. And so we created a heavy work and I had a crate and it was full of sight word books and sight word note cards and it was heavy. And he had to carry it down, carry it, carry, carry it. He's going to carry it down the stairs. Um, and um, he's taking it to our data manager every day. And so at one point she sent me an email and she said, Every day that he brings this down here, he looks at me and goes, so you still can't read. And like he had pieced all of that together, like, oh, look at all these books. This poor lady can't read. Um, that's why I'm taking it to her. So, but I learned a lot about sensory. Um, while I was dealing with Randall and Jalen, I also had Katie. And Katie had a huge sense of social justice. Um, Katie was the poster child for teachers who would go, 
Well, if she'd mind her own business as much as she minds everybody else's, she'd be all right. Um, Katie couldn't. Katie, Katie social justice and her worldview and just her strong personality said, I'm going to make sure this is okay for everybody, whether I'm involved in this situation or not. So what I had to read up and figure out how to do was include Katie in some social justice conversation. So part of her day would be, I would call her over and I'd say, I got this situation. I need your take on it. I also taught Katie that fair isn't always everybody getting the same, but fair is everybody getting what they need. Um, so Katie made me a better teacher, and I maybe made her a better student. And after Katie really had that chance to kind of get that social justice piece out of the way, she would actually do some work, which was amazing. Um, so I'm teaching special ed for years, loving what I do, and this quote keeps coming up in my head because I keep having these regular ed teachers come to me, and they go, you know, you need so-and-so, and so-and-so is really struggling. They should really come to see you. And, and I've got my classroom of kids that I see throughout the day, and I think, my kids are awesome. Like, they're amazing kids. Like, why are they not with you? Like, you don't see what I see because you're not, I don't know, like just something is missing. And so I'm gonna need to be a regular ed teacher now. So that's what I did. I went back to Gardner-Webb University and got my master's in elementary education. Um, so that I could be that first teacher that kids had, and I could make them love school, and I could find what makes them unique and what makes me laugh, and they would love to learn. So I get a job as a kindergarten teacher, and I'm like, yeah, this is what I was supposed to be doing. And the first day Malia walks in, and it's a small group, because we did staggered start. So I had a third the first day, and a third the second day, and a third the third day, and then the fourth day is when everybody came, and that's when everything just hit the fan. So. <laughs> Malia walks in and she says, um, she sits down and the bell rings and I'm like, I'm so glad y'all are in kindergarten. And she goes, did you know I play the violin? I, no, I didn't. Um, I'm not sure how to say your name yet, sweet pea. Um, <laughs> she said, I did. I started playing when I was three. And I was like, that's awesome. And guess what happened when I was four? I took the bait, what? Um, I kept playing. <laughs> And now I'm five and I still play. Okay. So automatically a little red flag goes up. It says, this girl maybe is really bright. Um, it became a bigger flag about 20 minutes later when she goes, I'm going to need to go to that water fountain over there. Um, I'm supposed to stay hydrated while I'm at kindergarten. <laughs> I come from a world of special ed. <laughs> um, so I had to call in the experts and go, help me. So I took some classes. I got my local certification and academically gifted because I needed to teach Malia. Um, I needed to make sure she had a great kindergarten year and that she loved learning as much as all the kids that I really thought I was going to teach kindergarten for. Um, Malia built a better teacher. She actually built a better teacher for Ian who came through my door the next year and was completely like I would say something and he'd be like, yeah, I've got that. Did you think about applying it this way, sir? Um, <laughs> So Ian had a lot of special projects for all the times that he didn't need me in his educational day. Um, he did, he researched dolphins, which he was obsessed with, and came up with his own dolphin riddles. Um, he did a timeline on Porsches and printed out the pictures and wrote sentences about how they changed through the years. Um, all of that was creating better readers and Ian created a better teacher, which really came in handy for Brady. Um, who came in and he was exactly where he was supposed to be. Sweet kid, just would do anything I asked. Um, and did everything that I asked because by the end of kindergarten he was reading, he could read books on like a third grade level, um, which was not me at all. Um, but I, because I had had Malia and Ian, I was able to direct Brady and say, hey, this is what we're gonna do to keep you growing. When I saw that he doesn't need my small group instruction anymore. Um, but he still needs me, and so this is what I'm doing. Um, Brady ended up skipping first grade um, because he just really is that bright. So let's get back to Randall. Randall definitely built a better teacher, and in my door walked Sammy. So Sammy would lay down. He'd come in every day. Now, Sammy was so cute. I could touch Sammy's arm, and my finger would go up to like the second knuckle, and I never would hit bone. Um, so I'm not real sure that there was a skeleton system in there. Um, 
but Sammy was his own personality and he would come in and he would take his shoes off and take his socks off and he would lay on my reading rug and put his head right at the top and begin to roll. Um, and so by the end of it, he was in a burrito with his head sticking out. Um, he would then stick two fingers in his mouth and instantly fall asleep into like a coma. Um, so that could have been very aggravating, but instead I remember Randall and I thought, he can maybe has some sensory issues. So I used what I had learned with Randall and then some, caught in some experts and we got Sammy right on the right path. So Randall really did make a better teacher for Sammy, who then made a better teacher for Caden, who came into kindergarten. And um, from the time, and when I say Caden cries, um, Caden didn't just cry when mom left him and then like we calmed down, like it's typical 95% of kids. Caden cried from mom pulling into the driveway until he got in the car and he was crying as they pulled away from the school after six and a half hours. Um, it really was just too much century for him. So thankfully, I kind of had, I knew what to do and I knew who to call and that's part of it. Um, so they all built a better teacher and I don't know who's coming next. Um, Katie had a strong personality and she really did get me ready for Whitney. I don't know if I could have been ready for Whitney without Katie. Um, Whitney, and this picture just says it all. Uh, I just, she was amazing. Uh, if she thought something, she said it. She believed it and that was the right thing to do. Um, a lot of times it meant she was gonna kiss a boy. Um, <laughs> boys would come to me and say, um, Whitney just kissed me. And um, so I would call her over and I'd say, why did you kiss him? And she would say, because he was there. <laughs> so we talked about life rules and how that's probably not the best one to have. Um, one of the boys she did love to kiss was Gunner. Um, and every time I would say, well, Gunner, what did you do? And I said, did you kiss her back? And he said, no, I'm gonna do that tomorrow. Um, <laughs> just big personalities all over the place. Um, Gunner came to me and, and Gunner was a runner. Um, I, <laughs> I like to teach in Crocs because I like to take them off and be barefoot a lot of the times in my classroom. And so he would take off and I'd kick off my Crocs and go after him and, and this doesn't run a whole lot. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I maybe would say things that like, you know, <laughs> you better hope I don't catch you um, <laughs> while I'm panting. Um, so. Me and Gunner, we just have the best relationship ever. Like I still see Gunner, he's a fantastic kid. Um, but they, they all taught me big personalities. These are the kids that will change the world. They're the kids that if we don't tell them, you have to sit in this seat and only listen to what I do and think the way I think. Gunner and Katie and Whitney, they'll, they'll look at World Hunger and go, well, did we try this? And we'll all go, no. And they'll go, all right, next problem. And, and they'll solve our world's problems because they just are that awesome of a kid that somebody has to acknowledge and go, you're really awesome, let's build on that. Finally, this is my daughter, Ella Caroline. Um, she taught me how to be a better teacher. Um, she actually taught me how to be a better parent. Um, she has Academic, she's academically gifted, so working with uh, Malia and Ian and Brady really helped. She also has dyslexia, which, so working in special ed has helped. Putting those two together is called twice exceptional, and I had no experience with that, so therefore, I'm on the trail of learning again. She, she's just amazing, and, and the things that she does, and, and it, I'm just very proud to be her dad, and I just think, not only has she made me a better teacher and a better, she's made me a better human, and that got me thinking about how I go about teaching and I, that, that I don't want Brady, I don't wanna teach kindergarten to Brady. I wanna teach Brady his kindergarten. And it looked completely different than Caden's kindergarten. But it's not I'm teaching kindergarten and pick up what you get. It's my students are what build a better teacher. It also goes along to they build a better human. And so as I think about this globally, I think, the people who I struggle with the most, when I struggle with them, it's because I'm, there's a, 
area of need inside me that I've got to figure out. And that's what my kids through the years have taught me. You're struggling with me because I'm pointing out something that, that maybe isn't as strong in you. And so when I build that up, then we get that relationship and we connect and, and they meet my expectations at that point. So when we come across obstacles, that's why we've got to look at obstacles and figure our way around them and figure out, okay, Maybe it's not them, maybe it is me. How do I approach this differently? And when I went into the classroom and I would approach something differently from what I've learned, great things would happen because I identified the problem and I said, this is how I can solve it. So I wanna go back to Jalen for a minute. Um, I had Jalen in second, third, and fourth grade, and then I had him in fifth grade. And when he was in fifth grade, he got lymphoma. Um, and so he had to go to a lot of treatments at the hospital. When he would come home, he needed a teacher, and that's called homebound. So I went to him and I said, I'm his homebound teacher. Please don't take applications. Like, it's me. I need to do this. Like, Jalen's my, Jalen's my student. I've got to do this. So two, three days a week, however much he could handle, I would go to his house after school, and we would work in his basement, and we would work on reading and, and catching up and talking and writing. And, and I remember one day I had him write a, an essay like, these are the three things I want to be when I grow up. And he was in fifth grade. And the first one on his list, that his little planning sheet, it said, a waiter at Outback. And I thought, huh, that's interesting. So I said, tell me more about number one. And he said, well, I know that Outback is your favorite restaurant. And if I'm a waiter there, then that means I can still see you. I don't deserve that. Um, I failed Jalen in second grade. I didn't teach him how to read. Now, eventually I did, but I, I didn't when I first met him. Like, Jalen had made me a better human. And then he tells me that. So at the end of his fifth grade year, they give me this picture of us on field day in a frame. And it's just, a, it's still on my shelf. And I got a very nice gift card to Outback. <laughs> um, so I keep up with Jalen. And, and then seven years ago today, Jalen passed away from his cancer. Um, but it wasn't before he changed the world because he changed me. And then in turn, I was able to be a better teacher for all of my kids in the future. So thank you.